Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to worship here at Palm on this wonderful Sunday. Welcome to everyone who has made it here in person, and welcome to all those joining us electronically from near and far. We give thanks for our continued safety and protection during this time of coronavirus, and we pray for all those who are absent from us right now, but who are still connected to us, and we hold them in our prayers. Just a few announcements to get us started today. First of all, a note of apology is due to everyone who attempted to watch the video of worship last week. For any who have not heard, there was a technological glitch in recording the service, and so whenever you went online to watch the service, you would see us moving around just fine, but there was no sound. So, bit of an issue there. We have made efforts to resolve it. Our sound system guy was here on Thursday to help resolve it, and we think we have the issue fixed. But if not, please do be in communication with us. And that goes as well for those in the sanctuary. If there are any further issues with the sound system from where you're sitting, please don't hesitate to let us know. But a question has also been raised about when the videos of the service will be available and why we're not live streaming the service while it's happening. The reason for that is we tested live streaming at the beginning of the pandemic when we first started recording Sunday's worship and we discovered that the way we have it set up now, there's a significant delay between the video and the sound. So you might see someone's mouth moving, but not hear them speaking until about 10 seconds later. And most people don't care for videos that work that way. So we will not be live streaming at this time until we are able to figure out how to fix that. Until then, the video that is recorded on Sunday morning concludes about 10.30 or so when worship is done, and then it takes roughly 90 minutes to format and upload to YouTube. So somewhere between 11.30 and noon on Sundays, the video will be available. So to all those watching us on YouTube, we know that you very much enjoy worshiping with us. You just may have to bear with us a little bit while it gets uploaded, and when we are able to make live streaming available, we will attempt that. A Couple of other things to pass along. First off, as we begin reopening, one of our first responsibilities, of course, is to prepare to lay to rest those of our number who have died during the time of the pandemic, and we've had to hold off on their funerals. We have four such funerals that are pending right now, and the first one is coming up. We will have a memorial service for Larry Nail this coming Saturday, that's the 12th, at 11 a.m. We will not be able to do a traditional visitation time beforehand, but if you arrive a few minutes early, you'll be able to be screened by the nurse, just as we always do, and then you'll have a chance to visit briefly with Sue and with some of the family out in the narthex before being escorted in here. And as always, we'll ask that everyone please wear masks and maintain social distance during that time but please do make the effort to surround Sue and the family with your prayers. And a reminder as well that we need ushers to assist with that service. So if you have been trained and are willing to assist with funerals, please do plan to be here on Saturday morning. And again, the funeral starts at 11 a.m. And of course, we commend Sue and the family to your prayers. That is all the announcements I have, except the traditional reminder that you've probably gotten a bit used to by now, but a reminder to please keep an eye on Palm's website during the weeks and months ahead. That will be our main place to share information with the congregation as quickly as possible. If you have access to the internet, but you know someone in your family or in your social circles who does not, if you see something on the website that needs to be addressed, please make sure that you call them and let them know what's going on. We're all in this together and we all need each other 
to get through this time safely, and communication is critical to that. We've learned during this time of the pandemic that we are good at communicating. So please do keep that up, and please do make the effort, if you see things that need to be passed along, to make sure that they do get shared, because we depend on each other for communication. That is all the announcements I have now. Is there anything that's not printed that we need to talk about? Over there. Okay. All right. And for any who didn't hear that, the Stephen Ministry Minute will have changed from being recorded weekly to being recorded monthly, at least through December. So you'll be able to see those videos on YouTube still, but it's once a month instead of once a week. But thank you to our Stephen ministers for being willing to continue that and to our Stephen leaders for guiding and supervising as this goes on. So anything else? If not, let us rise and begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your ways, go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those others. We keep your gift of salvation for ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you. In Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. For safety's sake, we will continue the practice not of singing our hymns, but of humming them. And so let us rise and hum together our gathering hymn, Earth and All Stars.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, it's back to school time again. All around the world, children in one way or another, whether it's online or in person, is going back to school. Well, I can tell you what uh, teachers are thinking about is how much do the students remember? <laughs> well, that way, if they find out what they know, they know where to begin to start teaching what they should know. So I thought it might be interesting if our Sunday school teachers thought about that too. So if we had a little quiz, maybe to find out how much we know. So this morning I have a simple little quiz. Are you ready? And this goes for the boys and girls and also the kids at young at heart too out there. So how many, here's the first question. How many of each animal did Moses take on the ark with him? The, the, the question was, how many animals, each animal, did Moses take on the ark with him? Zero. <laughs> Zero is correct. It wasn't Moses. It was Noah. <laughs> Okay, here's question number two. Question number two is, are automobiles mentioned in the Bible? I see a head shaking yes. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts 2, 1, and let's see what that says. It says, when the day of Pentecost has come, they were all in one accord. <laughs> Okay, I don't think they were talking about the Honda Accord automobile there. Mm -hmm. Those two first two questions were kind of a trick questions, having fun. But I promise the next question is not a trick question. And here it is. According to the Bible, can one plus one ever equal three? What do you think? The answer is yes, but how can that be? So according to the math that we all learned and you're learning in school, that shouldn't be true. But the answer is in the Bible. And Jesus said, for where there are two or three come together in my name, there I am with you. Oh, so if Two are gathered in Jesus' name. Jesus is there with them. So one plus one plus Jesus is three. Well, as I look around this room, I'm not sure exactly how many people here this morning, but whatever number that is, you can add one to it because Jesus is here too. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being here with us as we gather to worship in your name. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. 
Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but your blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 119 together, responsively. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, not just gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness. The second reading is from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than, we, than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and dark drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If the, remember, if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I'm grateful for the pleasant surprise in that children's message of some very good humor. It was needed. It was needed not just by me, but by many others who either are in this room or who watch on YouTube. It's because I know our parish just well enough to know that we happen to have some people here who are feeling just a bit overwhelmed nowadays. And it's not just being overwhelmed because of the virus and trying to figure out how we're going to do church with masks on and keeping social distance. We've got people here overwhelmed by other health issues that have cropped up and that they have to try to figure out a way through. We have folks here trying to figure out what their job situations are going to look like going forward. We have more than one family at present trying to figure out how to plan a funeral or how to plan a wedding and wondering what exactly we can and can't do. And we're facing the challenge of telling them we can't give you anything certain right now. And we of the church staff, on top of all this, are trying, in the midst of everything, to figure out how to put together worship and how to plan activities that keep as many people in a good mood at one time as possible. And a, you might say that's a bit of a challenge, just a bit. The biggest challenge, not just when you're dealing with the church, but when you're dealing with any aspect of life, and certainly when you're facing a tumultuous election year and a season fraught with racism. The biggest challenge is this. You always face a cacophony of opinions and beliefs that boil over in the news and on Facebook, everyone being absolutely convinced that they have the right idea. And particularly in election years, you see that most people who say they are right also invoke the name Christian and argue that to do what they say is the right thing is what Jesus would want you to do. And unfortunately, no matter what the issue is, elections or not, coronavirus or not, church or not, whatever, you will never, in any walk of life, find two people who agree exactly on every detail of something. And if you do, I want to hear about it. <laughs> but it just doesn't happen. And it's been around that way even in the halls of the church since the beginning. We have argued and fought within the church. We preach and proclaim peace and concord even here, but it hasn't existed since day one. But that's why, and we give thanks for this, that's why long before there was a pandemic, long before there was social media, long before there was the news that we have now, we have rules and guidelines given in the gospel for how to live with each other. Words like we just heard in St. Matthew's writing. Yet, stick with Matthew, and you might find that there's more than just a guideline for how to live here. You might find, even, that there is good news. Matthew, like every evangelist, isn't writing an exact eyewitness account. He's picking and choosing stories and sayings about Jesus that he's heard and that's been passed along. And he weaves them together, as each of the evangelists did, trying to pass along a specific message to the Christian communities that they served. These Christians were dealing with a particularly thorny problem, a problem that lasted for about 200 years. The question was, can someone who has been baptized, who has died and risen with Christ, can such a person still sin? Can we still sin after being baptized? Heck yes, we can. But they questioned that. 
And so they had to figure out what to do when someone, one of their own, did go astray. And so Matthew includes this threefold process for dealing with offense, dealing with sin, and figuring out how to live together. And it's a process that has worked with varying degrees of success throughout our history. I couldn't help but smile when I read those last words in the Gospel reading. Those words where Jesus said that if any two of you agree about anything, you will receive it. Because how often among Christians does that happen? But the good news is that this gospel is more than just a lecture about how to live. There is still good news here in these pages, even if it's not so clear in this one little pericope that we read today. The good news is that no matter what, that no matter who in the church brands each other as a sinner, no matter what lines we draw around each other declaring that this group is in and this group is out, that God does not draw those same lines. On the contrary, God breaks those lines down and makes a circle big enough to have room for us all even for those whom the church has branded throughout their history as Gentiles and tax collectors. After all, it was a tax collector who wrote these very words after having been accepted into the Christian fold. The good news is that we all have room at this table that there is enough room in the house of God and around the table of Christ for every last one of us. In time, the one who gave this command that we read in the gospel would go to the cross, taking every last bit of our human messiness and disagreement with him. Christ would rather die than condemn. No matter what the transgression is, no matter what the marks we place on each other saying in or out, no matter the dysfunction of the Christian family, we are still family, come what may, and we always will be. Because the love that bound us together from the baptismal font will never let us go. I would love it if I could stand up here this morning and promise you all that now that we are open once again, we would be able to produce a worship service on Sunday morning and a flawless video recording and activities in between our Sundays that would make us all jubilantly happy and have us all in perfect accord. And not necessarily the Honda kind. (laughs) But alas, I can't. The church is human, and we all need each other and copious amounts of grace to get through what we are called here to do. But thankfully, we have that grace as a free gift of God, and we have it here in abundance, and it will meet us here Sunday after Sunday, come what may. No matter how often we screw things up, no matter how big of a mess we make or how often we disagree with each other, we will come in here every single Sunday, week in and week out, and find our Lord waiting here for us, whispering into our ear the same words again and again, the words that we are, part of this family no matter what, and that our place in this house and at this table is safe forever. We call it absolution. In time, we will be able to come back up here to this altar. 
when we can have that forgiveness placed in our hands as edible as soft, fresh bread and sweet wine. That day will come. That, indeed, I can promise you. So, go in peace when the time comes. Go in peace knowing that your welcome here is safe, that your sins are wiped away, and that Christ will go with you into the wilderness of the world outside and will bring you back again each week. No matter how much we all mess up, no matter how deep our need for that grace becomes, it will always be here and it will hold us forever, never letting us go. Today, tomorrow, and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter to all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially David and Cora Lou, Lindsay, Todd, Nancy, Margaret, Sharon, Amanda, and George. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you in the way of truth and life. Amen. Let us hum together our sending hymn, Bind Us Together. <laughs> 